Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. This is Pradeep and you're watching Vlog of Note. So the internet is awash with rumors about Google partnering with Samsung and Exynos to give us a custom Exynos processor on the next Pixel 5 or Pixel 6. I really don't care about Pixel phones. However, in this video, I thought I'd tell you how Samsung could be using this to their advantage to do justice for us, their customers outside of the US and potentially scare Qualcomm. Let's get started. So unless you've been living under a rock, you're probably already aware of the fact that Qualcomm and Exynos are the two different processors found on Samsung's flagship phones. You have the Samsung Galaxy S20, you have the Snapdragon 865 version, and you have the Exynos 990 version. The Snapdragon 865 is actually better in every single respect. It is faster, it has more battery efficiency, it takes better pictures, and it has better thermal performance. So this has become so bad that a Samsung fan has created a petition on change.org. I will link to it in the description right next to that like button in which he's telling Samsung stop selling Exynos inferior phones. Indeed, at this year's annual general meeting, a shareholder asked Samsung why they are selling inferior Exynos powered phones when Qualcomm Snapdragon is available. Now, there are two options in the petition that have been put out. One, give us universally Qualcomm powered devices and two, give us separate branding. Maybe you have the Exynos or the poor man's edition of the Samsung Galaxy S20. Let's examine both of these options. The first option, give us universally powered Qualcomm devices. I think this is bad because I think Qualcomm is the worst thing that happened to the smartphone industry, specifically in 2020. You see the Snapdragon 865 only comes with 5G because according to Qualcomm, the whole world has 5G. When you opt for the Snapdragon 865, you have to get a 5G modem and every Android manufacturer this year has to get 5G on their phones. The only concession that Qualcomm is ready to make is that you can opt not to use millimeter wave. 5G has two options. You have millimeter wave and you have sub six. Millimeter wave is what Samsung opted not to use on the Samsung Galaxy S20, the regular, and that's how they reduced the price. This has completely screwed OnePlus, whose flagship killer days are long gone. The OnePlus 8 Pro costs more than $1,000. How is that a flagship killer? Anyway, Google is so sick of this that on the upcoming Pixel 5, they are opting for the Snapdragon 765 and not the Snapdragon 865. Google can do whatever they want with the Pixel phones. Until they get serious about Pixel phones, I don't think you as the user should be serious about Pixel phones. So giving Qualcomm powered devices universally is a bad idea. The second idea of giving separate branding is also bad in my opinion, because Samsung already has a light phone. That's L-I-T-E. You have the Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite, which launched to the start of this year. They had last year's flagship Snapdragon 855 in them universally. Probably early next year, you will also have the Samsung Galaxy S20 Lite and the Note 20 Lite, which will have the Snapdragon 865 universally, but I would not recommend you buy them. Samsung's lineup is already confused and creating a separate brand is more confusion. Now there is a third option and that is partnering with a company like Google to give us a custom Exynos processor, thereby making their Exynos processors a lot better. Apparently Google is partnering with Samsung. They've hired a lot of people. They've signed the deal to give us a custom Exynos processor. This will have two Cortex-A78 cores, two Cortex-A76 cores and four Cortex-A55 cores. Apparently it will be 20% faster than the Snapdragon 865 and it will come out towards the latter half of this year or early next year. But whatever the case may be, it seems that the Exynos processors are going to get a lot better, which is a good thing for Samsung customers across the world outside of the US and also good for the Android phone industry in general. By the way, this isn't the first time that a big company is partnering with Samsung. Apparently, Apple partnered with Samsung to give us the Apple A4 processor, which was in the iPhone 4, and it was an overclocked Cortex A8 from ARM. ARM is the company that gives you the chip design and the chip manufacturers use that design to give you good processors. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Drop your comments on what you think is going to be the Exynos 995 or the Exynos 1000 or whatever it is that Samsung decides to call it in the comment section down below. As always, please go over to YouTube and subscribe to the Vlog of Note channel. Ring that notification bell so that you never miss a video and I will see you guys in the next episode.